Support for NPR and the following message come from Vimeo Create. You don't have to be an expert to create high-quality videos for your business. Add clips, pick a template, and let the smart tools of Vimeo Create handle the rest. More at vimeo.com slash create. Radio with us, click and clack. The Tappet Brothers, we're broadcasting this week from the Attitude Department here at Car Talk Plaza. More importantly, the importance of attitude. Really? And here it is. Here are excerpts from a dog's diary. Ah. Day 180, 8 a.m. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, dog food, my favorite. 9.30 a.m. Oh, boy, a car ride, my favorite. 10.30 a.m. Oh, boy, dog food, my favorite. <laughs> 1 p.m. Oh, boy, the kids, my favorite. Day 181, 8 a.m. Oh, boy, dog food, my favorite. <laughs> Excerpts from a cat's diary. Day 183. My captors continue to taunt me with bizarre little objects. <laughs> I mean, isn't that it? That, that says like, it all. Like it. They, they lavishly eat fresh meat while I am forced to eat dry cereal. The only thing that keeps me going is the hope of escape. And the mild satisfaction I get from ruining the occasional piece of furniture. <laughs> yeah, no, I always, I've always had the feeling that my cat is being held against his will. <laughs> You're absolutely he right. He hates us. Even though you let him out, and he could run off if he wanted to. There's something he keeps. He just keeps coming back because he wants to get even. <laughs> Anyway, if you'd like to talk to us, our number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 1-888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hey, this is Aaron from Austin, Texas. Aaron with two A's? You, with two A's, yeah. Oh, just checking. The King James Version. The King I guess. James, James Version. Version. From and, Austin, Texas. And not the King Version. The King had one A. The King. Elvis no. Aaron Presley. With one A. I don't understand why. Misspelling. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Aaron, what's what's going on? I have a uh, a Chevy Impala, and it's a taxi cab. Really? Oh, you drive yeah. a cab? I do. Good man. Yeah. Anyway, this Impala usually runs beautifully. It's brand new, so it's only got about 30,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. Until I got it back from my night driver a couple of weeks ago, and he said there's a problem. It has no passing power. So I mm -hmm. took it out and drove it, and sure enough, when I would romp on the gas, instead of taking off like a champ, it uh, took off like it was towing a trailer full of bricks. <laughs> it um, makes a, a funny little noise when you push the gas down and it shifts. I'm going to tell you the sound it makes. Yeah. Oh, okay. It makes a sound like air escaping from a balloon. You ever take a balloon and, and it's, pinch the... Actually, it's not like that. <laughs> nope. Nope, no. that's not it. It makes a sound like this. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, like you, you made too many banana daiquiris and your blender is burned out. That would be pinging which would suggest that the wrong octane fuel was in there. What do you use for gas? I put, I put beautiful gas in it. How beautiful is it? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> is it more beautiful it's, it's than always, me? <laughs> it's always fancy name brand. It's, it's always Texaco or Chevron or something. And uh, 93 octane? 93, yeah. What the heck are you burning that stuff for? <laughs> well, because I was putting 89 in it, and I thought I heard ping, so I put 93. Didn't help. Really? So it sounds like a bunch of marbles rattling inside a coffee can. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So it is pinging. Yeah, but it's but very, why? very faint. But why? Is the check engine light on? Yes. Oh, oh but well, it goes off sometimes. Aaron! Oh, no, that that's the whole problem. you got to tell us these things. You, you have, <laughs> I'm going to guess you have a bad crank angle sensor. Crank angle sensor. Yeah, that's my guess. And what? Because this thing is fuel injected and electronically controlled... You have different sensors on the engine, which are telling the computer when to shoot in the gas, and more importantly, to when to the timing. fire the spark plugs. Aha! Uh -huh. And if any of those sensors are sending the wrong information to the computer, what will result is pinging and low power, black smoke, poor mileage, and Noises. the check engine light will come on. <laughs> I love that. Yes, that's great because it that means it's not the transmission. No. Oh, and the night the driver had told the cab owner that it was the transmission, and I contended that it was not. Oh, the you don't own the cab? No. What do you care? <laughs> <laughs> well, I because I gotta save face. Oh, I see. I oh. told the owner that it wasn't the transmission, but he doesn't believe that I'm very mechanically inclined. 
Oh, but if oh, I tell him I think it's the crank angle sensor, he's going to think I'm a genius and I'll never have to play lease again, probably. That's oh. right. You won't have to drive the night shift anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Aaron. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. Hope we're right. All right. Me too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Yeah. He hopes we're right yeah, more, than, especially, more than we do. <laughs> we don't really care. one <laughs> car talk That's eight. What if we were getting paid on the basis of right answers? <laughs> Yeah, wouldn't that be sad? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, we'd be we'd we'd be we'd have the next cardboard box next to what's what are the two guys in uh... <laughs> what grilling squirrels under a bridge? <laughs> roasting, <laughs> roasting squirrels <laughs> under a bridge. Right. One eight eight eight. Oh, thank God for America. One eight 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 car talk. That's eight eight eight. Imagine how well we do in Italy. Two, two, they don't seven, care about anything over there. Eight. My son recently <laughs> flew to Italy for a, for a high school trip. Yeah. They flew Alitalia Airlines. He said the plane takes off. Everyone's strapped in his seat. As soon as it leaves the runway, everyone breaks into applause. <laughs> so thrilled that they're not dead. <laughs> They're actually off the ground. As soon as it made it off the ground, everyone started cheering, <laughs> clapping. Yay! Fantastic! We're not dead. And then <laughs> he said, as soon as the plane even came close to leveling off, and in spite of the seatbelt sign being on, everyone is out of his seat, <laughs> running around trading chickens with the guy. <laughs> oh, it was. Uh, and they're they're cowboys. The the the. Yeah, well, they they guys, fly like they drive. They fly like they drive. Yeah. I mean, even when they're on the runway and they're going over to the gate, they're, they're speeding. Yeah. Well, these are the guys who lost their licenses. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're hanging lefts and rights. Wings are bouncing <laughs> off the tarmac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Woo! Well, anyway, yeah, so we if... If we fail here, we're heading right for the old country, <laughs> the home of our ancestors. One eight 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 car talk. That's eight 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 two two. We're not dead. <laughs> we're not dead. <laughs> or are we? <laughs> At least they were sure of it. They were happy, no matter yeah. what. Two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on car talk. This is Catherine from Danville, Kentucky. Hi, Catherine. Uh, with let's a see, K. Oh, wait a minute now. K. Danville, Kentucky. Absolutely not. C a t h e r i n e. That's right. You. Bet. Okay, I'll make. I that know one. my Kentucky women, boy. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> How are you, Kathy? I'm good. How Do your you? friends call you Kathy or Catherine? Catherine. Yeah, I would. I would. Anyway, Catherine, what's up? What kind of a sled do you drive? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a, a 1985 Volkswagen Golf with 189,500 miles on it. My God, Ooh, that's good. Yes. And for the last five years, I've had a problem with the oil pressure light and buzzer going off. Yes. When I level out at 2,000 RPMs. Right, level out. <laughs> yeah. I like when you reach 2,000 feet or cruising 2, altitude. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you, this vehicle has two oil switches, and what it has is a low pressure, low oil pressure warning and a high oil pressure warning. And what's going off is the high oil pressure warning. Okay. So it may be what usually, you've had the problem for five years? Yes. Has I've anyone tried to fix it? Have you been well, ashamed to talk to anyone about it? Or? Yes, I have. I have. And so you get up to 2K, you're cruising, you're getting up to high speed in the highway, and eh, the buzzer goes off. Exactly. And what do mm. you do? Pull so, the fuse out. You pull the fuse <laughs> <laughs> out. That's Perfect. the only thing I can do. Unless well, I'm you've done everything that's possible. That's what they would do at the, <laughs> at the dealership. <laughs> Well, someone put a new oil pump in for me in the last six months, and that seemed to do the trick. Oh, really? But then when someone else changed the oil, then the problem's back. And I just had the oil changed a month ago, and the new pump was put in six months ago. Well, I, oh. I, I don't. Uh, I, I, I think when the pump was put in, the weather was warmer, and now that now that it's colder, the oil is more viscous. They may have used a different viscosity oil. Right. But what, it, what it's boiling down to is this: there were two switches. And the one that runs, I don't remember which one runs the high pressure uh, side of the thing, but you can have that switch replaced. It's probably, le it's less than $20 for sure, probably less than 10 bucks. Okay. And you should do that. When that doesn't fix it, then you can, you can try uh, replacing the buzzer or removing the buzzer. It would be nice to check to see if you truly do have high oil pressure. Now, the light, I trust the light comes on at the same time that the buzzer goes off? Yes. Okay. So if you by removing the fuse, have you disabled the low pressure side of the light as well? 
In other words, when you turn the key to the on position in the morning to start the car, uh-huh. does the oil light light up? Yes. It, well, I just remove it when I'm driving. And then I oh, what a pain in. that is. Especially in a Volkswagen, you have to get. No, down she's probably your... got it hooked up with a string, so she can just do it on the fly. <laughs> I've memorized where it is, so I just yank it out. Well, I mean, but try replacing the switch. If that doesn't work, you can yank the buzzer. You can even replace the buzzer. Maybe that the buzzer is no good. Okay. But but uh, but you should, like Tommy suggests, and I never agree with him. You should have the oil pressure checked to see if it's exceeding the maximum. Because even though they replaced the pump, there may be something else wrong. Maybe, maybe clogged passages, or you may have a faulty oil pressure relief valve. Okay. So mm. any one of those things can cause it. But if all else fails, it, obviously in five years' time, it hasn't done anything terrible. You can safely take the buzzer out. Okay. And don't worry about it. I've taken a few out myself. I've done a few buzzerectomies. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Good luck, Catherine. Thanks Good luck, so Catherine. See you. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. bye-bye. one 888 Talk or one 227 8255 Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, guys. This is Daniel on Long Island. Hey, How you doing? Daniel, what's going on? Well, I've got a uh, a 2000 Volvo Cross Country. Okay. And uh, when the heat comes on, the car fills with what I can only describe as a barfy aroma. A barfy aroma? Yeah. I mean, it smells like somebody threw up in the car. And this has been going on how long? Uh, about 10 days. Norwalk virus. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> It's making its way to a, Long Island. A severe case of no you, 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 virus. You think, huh? Well, the car had it. Yeah, it it, it, it happens. It, cars it, get it. Dogs get it. Yeah, in humans it lasts about two days, but in cars two weeks. <laughs> so in a, I would figure about four days the car will be all better. <laughs> this just started, huh? Yeah, it just it just started. No, I think <clears throat> I think what you're smelling is mold. Yeah, but where does it come from? It's coming from the heating system. All of a sudden, why wasn't I, why well, wasn't you know, I, why wasn't I smelling it when the air conditioning was on? Isn't that a good question? When was that? That Six was like a, that was a distant memory when the air conditioner <laughs> was on. No, I mean, mold spores are an interesting phenomenon. Oh, uh, here we go. No, it, no, well, I, <laughs> my, my brother's medical and scientific knowledge about mold you don't spores. Sm- you're not you're not aware of them until they reach a critical mass. Oh. And you, oh, no, no. It depends on how sensitive your nose is. Obviously, there, there, there are some people who who can detect one mold spore per hundred million. Oh, so there's a critical mass of mold well, spores. Well, you know, I mean, I was, I was, I was willing to ignore this problem, but I, I had my daughters with me uh, a couple of days ago, and the heat came on, and, and it was, oh my God, the, the what's that? Old, the eight-year-old says, ah, smells like barf. But do you, but does it smell like barf to you, or does it smell more like mold and mildew? No, it smells like barf. Oh, I got it. Where do you park? In front of the house. You live sort of in the woodsy parts of Long Island? I know what it is now. No, but, oh, you know, that, 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 that's an interesting point. Yeah. Uh, just before this happened, uh, I was refilling the washer fluid. Yeah. And uh, I took the opportunity to clean out all the leaves and twigs and everything that collects under the windshield. Yeah, including, including the mouse nests. Uh, well, Maybe I don't know. Yeah, what you, have, you, you have a do you have a dead mouse? You think so? Yeah, that, now you, that would I, make I sense. I smell dead mice. I know what they smell like. It's not that. Well, maybe it's a dead shrew. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they smell different. I don't know, but it's a dead something or other. You yeah. think there's a dead something in the I think yeah. duct someplace? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's a pretty offensive smell. Yeah. I mean, do I just wait until it dries up or get somebody to clean well, it out? Well, here's the, it's here's the take problem. take a long time. It, 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 what's happening is that every night the mouse is getting flash frozen. All right? <laughs> it's like a turkey dinner. That's in the freezer. Yeah, so and it's going to last forever. It's going to last because then what happens is every day you turn the car and the heater on, you defrost it a little bit. And it stinks like hell. And, stink, and then it goes back in the freezer. So this could last for months. Here's what you do. Yeah. Here's, this is it. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Is it involved <laughs> getting a cat? <laughs> no, no. You get a full tank of gas. Yeah. You drive home. Yeah. I leave it running all night. You leave it running. You got it. You leave it running all night with the heater on with all the windows down. You get out in the morning, everything will be f- fine. No. With the heat on and all the windows down so that the guy can drive through and drive off my car. Hey, if it happens, it happens. <laughs> no, I mean, the only remedy really is to take the, the, uh, the duct work apart. I mean, God knows where this guy got into. That's doesn't sound like I'm loving it. No, no it's expensive. I, I, I wouldn't like it either. 
It's expensive. Now, this car it's does have Volvo. an under-the-hood uh, air filter for the uh, for the heating system. Ah. And you may be lucky. You may be able to take this filter out. You may be able to, to fish around See in there something. or get in there with the vacuum cleaner hose. Uh-huh. Oh, that would be very yeah. nice. I mean, alternatively, you could try spraying stuff in there to, you know, mask or camouflage the smell. Yeah. But if it's a dead mouse, it's going to be tough because no matter what you put in there, it'll always be there. And it takes a long time. I mean, mice a little, but they take a long time to evaporate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't See, I know it. Oh, yeah. No, that that's undoubtedly what it is. Those critters find the most interesting things to do. They do, and they can, and mice can squeeze into anything. So there's yeah. no there's no way to keep them out. If they decide to to uh, reside in your ventilation system, they're going to get in there. And if the guy died, he died. Okay. Good luck, Dan. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye. 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 Okay, Tommy, are you ready for your weekly fill-in-the-blank puzzler hit? Oh, jeez, yes. Go ahead. Okay, here it is. Last week when you had a coughing fit, remember you went, <laughs> Yeah. Berman thoughtfully handed you a what? He handed me a cigar, I think it was, and a bouquet of <laughs> ragweed. <laughs> okay, well, it must have been Louie who handed you the water. I was looking for a glass of water. The puzzler is about glasses of water. I remember And how they can be combined to produce other glasses of water. Remember. Got it? Yeah. We'll that be was back a good with the one. answer in just a minute. Yeah. This Okashi's fine for me. I don't need no luxury. A broken seat with holes in it. I don't know. She just fits. Nice right. Always predictable. She's on the mend. That's right. Always dependable. She's like a friend. This old car. This old car. And even though the NPR grief counselor asks for three more full time assistants <laughs> whenever she hears us say it. This is NPR. This message comes from NPR and Car Talk sponsor CarMax. At CarMax, the best way to buy a car is your way. Shop on your schedule and choose from over 50,000 CarMax certified vehicles at CarMax.com. Check out 360 degree views, set up a trade in appraisal, apply for financing, and buy online or in store with curbside pickup and home delivery in select markets. Get all the details and start to search for your next car today at CarMax.com. This message comes from Car Talk and NPR sponsor BetterHelp, the online counseling service dedicated to connecting you with a licensed counselor to help you overcome whatever stands in the way of your happiness. Fill out a questionnaire and get matched with a professional tailored to your needs. And if you aren't satisfied with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time free of charge. Visit betterhelp.com slash car talk to get 10% off your first month. Get the help you deserve with BetterHelp. We are still in the middle of this pandemic. And right now, having science news you can trust, from variants to vaccines, is essential. NPR Shortwave has your back. About 10 minutes every weekday, listen and subscribe to Shortwave, the daily science podcast from NPR. Hi, we're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappert Brothers. And we're here to talk about cars, car repair, and the, the answer to last week's puzzler. I have to say, I don't have it yet. Oh, well, I, I will tell you, well, I'll, let, me, let me start from the beginning. Yeah. This was sent in by someone named Frank Juskolka from Cyberspace, I think. And he writes, I was recently asked this question on a job interview for a software engineering position. I figured it out finally, but it took me too many steps, so I didn't get the job. Maybe this puzzle will help some poor unemployed engineer get a job with the sick and twisted manager who gave me the <laughs> test. <laughs> And here's the test. You've got a four-ounce glass and a nine-ounce glass, and you have an endless supply of water. You can fill or dump either glass. You can fill one, dump the other, fill both, pour them on your head, do whatever you want. And you can dump one into the other, obviously. And uh, the objective is to measure out exactly six ounces of water in the fewest number of steps. Yeah. Well, Frank sent us an answer with 15 steps. 
Yes. And, of course, I researched this very carefully, <laughs> spent about a minute on it, and determined that Frank, who, who said he didn't get the job because it took him too many steps, I'm afraid he's not going to get the second job either because that took him too many steps. Our estimable Louis Cronin figured it out in only like uh, eight steps in his how. Are you, are you paying attention? Uh, of course I'm paying attention. Undivided. Undivided. Go you, ahead. You start with... Uh, is that a new shirt you're wearing? <laughs> <laughs> you start with both glasses empty. Yeah. Okay. Step one, you fill the nine-ounce glass. Mm. Step two, you pour four ounces from the nine-ounce glass into the four-ounce glass because that's all you can do, right? Yeah. Okay. Step three, you dump out the four-ounce glass. Okay. So you got five ounces left in the big glass. That's right. I'm with you. Step four, again, you fill the four-ounce glass from the nine-ounce glass. Okay. Okay. And step five, again, dump the four-ounce glass. So now the four-ounce glass is empty, and you got one ounce in the nine-ounce glass. You are. Am I? Am I quick? You're paying attention. <clears throat> I am. Step six, <laughs> pour the one ounce of water from the nine-ounce glass. Okay, you uh -huh. got one ounce into the four-ounce glass. This is this is crucial now. Okay. Step seven, fill the nine-ounce glass. Okay, so at the moment here, you got a full nine-ounce glass, and you have one ounce in the four ounce glass. So now you pour just enough water from the nine ounce glass to fill the four ounce glass, which means you're pouring how much out of the nine ounce glass? Three ounces. Right, and that leaves how many ounces in the nine ounce glass? My God, six. QED. <laughs> <laughs> so Frank. Frank, back to the drawing board. <laughs> Frank gave us 15 steps. Frank, I would consider a new career. Yeah. Frank, you ought to consider grave digging. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a winner. The winner is Ken Thurn from, of all places, Honolulu, Hawaii. At a boy, Ken. And, Ken, we are going to deliver to you <laughs> a luau. A $25 <laughs> gift certificate. It's going to take both of us. So if you want all to right. get this $25 gift certificate, send us two round-trip first-class tickets from Boston to Honolulu, and we will deliver you your $20 gift certificate with which... You can get one and eight seventeenths of a Car Talk baseball cap, just in time to protect your ball spot from the hot Hawaii sun. Good work, Ken. Anyway, we'll have a brand new puzzle coming up in the third half of the show, so don't go anywhere. In the meantime, if you have a question about your car, give us a call. The number is eight 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 Car Talk. That's eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hello, my name is Cheryl, and I live in North Liberty, Iowa. Cheryl with, with, an, with an S, S or, a C or an C. S. C. It's the only it. way to spell it. Well, no, we know someone who spells it with an S. North Liberty, Iowa? Yes, it's right near Iowa City. Uh-huh. Well, uh, I have an 86 Chevy Nova, and uh, the headliner is falling down. Oh. And every time I get in the car, it rearranges my hair, and I <laughs> walk out with this curl on top of my head. Yeah. And so I need some uh, advice. Because I know you guys are what I would consider laterally thinking fashion mavens of the car interior. Yes. <laughs> I thought so. So I'll tell you what I've tried. Yeah. I've tried the glue and about asphyxiated myself. Oh, yeah. And that doesn't work. I think there's a little um, foam rubber thing that they put on there, and then they glue the, the material to That's that. That's right. The material has separated from the backing. Yeah, and it may have all fallen apart. Yeah, I think so. Well, is 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 the foam piece still uh, still intact? Well, not hardly. Not hardly. So that's disintegrated too. So not only is the cloth coming down, but yeah. but the liner is actually coming down too. You're done for. You're done for. I'm because done when for. when that when that piece deteriorates, it just sort of crumbles, right? Yeah. And when it, it does, there's nothing to stick to anymore. Right. So you're going to have to replace that. Well, you could resort to the NHL. The no, <laughs> no headliner, headliner look. look. No <laughs> headliner. I mean, you could just rip the thing out. You don't. I mean, there's, there's no law that says you have to have a headliner. That's true. On the other hand, it would cushion you to some extent if your head were to hit the roof. Oh, but, but that's you not could obviate happen. that problem by wearing one of those styrofoam bicycle helmets. Well, right. That could be part of my 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 look. <laughs> it's your, exactly part of your new look, the no headliner look. See, whenever, whenever we get these kind Speaking of big in Vegas now, the no headliner. Look. <laughs> well, when we get these wacko kinds of questions, I always try wacko. to think. Yeah, well, I mean, this is not your average problem, you know. No, we, that's we don't true. get many people with this problem. I always ask myself, what would I do 
if it were my car. And you know what image came to me? I bet you my brother is going to be able to pull it right out. All right. What, what would I, if that were my car? Yeah. Oh, you'd wear a hat. No. <laughs> a stick. A st- oh, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. The a stick, and you wedge it into the seat, and boop, it holds up the headliner. Just oh. on my side. Right? Sure. Uh, oh, put huh? the, the stick has to go between the seats. You have a Nova, so you have bucket seats. Yeah. Right where the handbrake lever is. Yeah, stick. You, you're going to put a stick, and to that <laughs> stick, you're going to attach a piece of plywood about eight <laughs> inches wide exactly. by two feet oh. long. That's right, and it's going to oh, go right across. Than that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> a broom. A broom. You need a broom. A broom you cut off the handle and you wedge that baby the in there. Classic short handle broom. <laughs> okay. That's okay, Cheryl. <laughs> but I would, if it, actually, I would just rip the thing out because after a while, the broom is gonna get is gonna start making right. you nervous. Well, no, the bro- you know the broom is good because when there's snow in your car in the winter, what do you do? You just take oh, it you out. Sweep take it the off. broom out. You clean it off. You stick yeah. the broom back in. I love multifunctionality. Yes, well, I know. And I also might uh, attract some conversation. Oh, there's no question about that. Now, if you really wanted to fix this, it would require that you went to a junkyard and bought a new headliner. I see. But putting the headliner in may require taking out the windshield. Mm. Oh, Front or back windshield, I don't know, because it may not fit in through any other way. Uh Uh-huh. Well, could I use any other kind of fabric? Oh, could you fashion one yourself? Yes, because, see, I make custom clothes. You do? Uh huh. You do. You're thinking of a like a nice Scotch plaid. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> but you're gonna have a full Chicago inside the car. <laughs> yes, yeah, Scotch plaid would be interesting. I mean, but if I did, how would I make it stay? Well, up? you can't. That's the problem because the thing that it's that the material is stuck to has disintegrated. So there's no way. I mean, you could take what you have there and try to sew it to the backing. But if you can't do that, then you'll not be able to sew anything else to that, and you must remove then the whole yeah. piece. Yeah. Well, if I took it off, is there something I could cover the ceiling with that would kind of make it um, a slight fashion statement? You're, you're, you're thinking maybe you take down the headliner yeah. and you rug it. And you'll be left, of course, with that other piece that's up there. Well, you know, that piece will be gone, too, because that all well, will come down. You'll be left with the metal roof. Yeah. Yes. You'll that's be looking you at the other side with. of the painted surface. Well, and there's still some of the foam rubber there and some of the glue. Yeah, that but that's all going to fall out. You're going to have to scrape that all off. Oh, scrape it off. Okay. Yeah. Scrape all that off. And then we, we want to make, what you, what you, you call it? it, a fashion statement. You could rug it. Rug it? Rug it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with contact cement. Oh. Right? Sure. Rubber but, cement applied but... to the uh, applied to the metal and rubber cement applied to the rug. You know, you let that stuff dry on both surfaces and you slam it together. Make sure you put it on straight because you'll never get it off. All right, and it won't uh, come loose in the hot weather? Oh, of course it will, but that's why you have the broom <laughs> but, with you. But you will... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think it'll come loose in the hot weather, but I'll, I'll, I'll confess that I've never tried it. I see. But we count on our listeners to try all these stupid uh, things yes, and report back. Yes, it's kind back. of like doing research in the field, isn't it? <laughs> yes, exactly. it is. Drive around your neighborhood. Somebody must be tearing out a shag rug someplace. <laughs> You don't need much. (laughs) You don't need much. I'd go for a nice, you know, something in a nice peach or melon. (laughs) Cheryl, you're a good sport. (laughs) Thanks for calling. Good luck. Have fun with this. Don't don't miss this opportunity because you can have a lot of laughs. You've got to have fun because if you get serious about it, you'll be very disappointed. I see. Okay. Because nothing's going to work. I I promise. All right. (laughs) Send us a picture. Okay. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Bye. Bye. You you could, I mean, draperies come to mind. I mean, you could put all kinds of interesting stuff. Tapestries. Oh, we didn't mention sand. Oh, you know what she needs? Gluing the sand to the inside. Velvet Elvis. She needs a Velvet Elvis on her headliner. Elvis. Of course, everyone should have one. Yes. one eight 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 car talk or one eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is Jim in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Hi. Hi Jim, what's How are up? You? I'm fine. Baton we... Rouge. The red stick. Correct. Yeah. Big deal. I learned that in fourth grade. New Orleans. <laughs> the big easy. <laughs> okay, Jim, what's up? Well, I've been having problems with exploding auto parts. Oh. Really? Which parts? I've had a battery explode and a muffler blow up. These were on different cars. Yeah. Both times I was driving. Hmm. Yeah, well, these things are most apt to happen when you're driving as opposed to in the house well, watching TV. Well, not the battery. The battery is not usually doesn't happen when you're driving. But both, both of those things have been known to blow up. 
what would cause a battery to blow up? Mmm. Mmm. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, a spark. Because when a battery is char being charged, it is producing hydrogen gas. Right. And any kind of spark. Now, where would the spark come from? We're going to address that issue in a moment. But if there were any spark under there, because the hydrogen gas, first of all, if the, if the uh, charging system is overcharging, so I would right away say, check to see if it is, right. then you're making a lot of hydrogen gas, which is collecting underneath the hood. Does it really? Where's it going to go? I thought Sounds like some <laughs> cock and bull story to me. <laughs> go ahead. No, I got, I got the whole scenario. I thought it was supposed to stay inside the battery. Your voltage regulator is overcharging, is causing the battery to be overcharged, which is therefore producing hydrogen gas. In addition to which, you have bad secondary wiring. You need spark plug wires. And I'll bet you, now, are you ready for Did this? Did you hit your head or something no, today? Wait a minute. I am gonna, I am gonna pull out a Sherlock Holmes like you. And when, when he says, "My God, how did you know that?" You are gonna bow down on your knees. You're, and gonna, you're gonna tell say, him what kind of a car it is. I'm gonna tell him that when the battery blew up, it was raining. Wrong. <laughs> I'm sure I have a lot of secondary wiring problems now that battery acid is spread everywhere. Spread Jim, don't you realize the tremendous, tremendously powerful impact it would have had if you had said, my God, how did you know that? You would have gotten a check in the mail. Yeah, we might have slipped you 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, of course, now you have a mess. I mean, it is all, all of this, although it sounds far-fetched, is all very possible. Because it isn't usual that batteries blow up while you're driving around. Can I ask a few questions in order that we might get to the truth here? <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. happened a long time ago on a car that you subsequently well, continued happened to drive? Last week. Uh, it, I have a Toyota Camry that's been a very good car. I've been very happy with it. Mm -hmm. And recently, as I was turning into a parking lot... Kaboom. Uh, the, the battery blew up. Kaboom. Yeah. Kaboom. I, I thought it was something that had hit the underside of the car at first, so I got out and looked underneath and didn't see any large pieces hanging down. So what's so the status I, of the Camry now? Well, uh, once I cleaned it up... And you put a new battery in it? And, and put a new battery in it and tried to hose down everything I could find and a few things I couldn't find. It's, it's been running fine since. The charging system checks out okay. Uh, a mechanic took 20 seconds to tell me that. Mm, and, yeah, then he doesn't know. And then I spent a whole afternoon with the service manual and all the analyzers coming to the same conclusion that he did in 20 seconds. So <laughs> everything checks out according to the specs. I don't think it has anything to do with my brother's hair breaking. <laughs> it, Errant, was a, it was quite a scenario. A errant picture. secondary voltages. <laughs> First of all, the, the, there's no external coil in this car. It's sealed under the distributor cap. Doesn't matter. And the likelihood that that stuff would escape is about 1 in 10 million. It well, could happen. Unless but, it were raining. Unless it were raining. The peculiar behavior of the dog. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> it's possible that the thing overcharged at one time and is no longer overcharging. But you, may have, mm -hmm. you might have noticed that other things were peculiar. For example, your directionals would have been going instead of click, 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 click. My guess is that the fault was in the battery itself. The battery short-circuited and blew itself up. What an uninspired answer. But correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you want, so, correct or do you want some glamour, Jim some wants drama. the right answer. He wants to know if he can continue to drive this car or should he wear a face mask. <laughs> and I think you can drive it without further worry. I think it, that what happened happened because of the battery itself, and that battery, of course, is gone now because it got splattered all over the place. And if you have, in fact, checked out the charging system, I would agree with my brother, despite the fact that I thought my story was quite wonderful. It, your story was wonderful. <laughs> Wrong, but wonderful. Wrong, <laughs> but wonderful. No, if you really have checked out the charging system, then it probably was the battery, a defective well, I can, battery. I can stop calling this car the Hindenburg and well, get back into it comfortably. Maybe. Now, you want to know about the muffler? The muffler can blow off for many reasons, but the most likely reason is buildup of unburned gases in the exhaust system, and and then it's ignited by a spark. And it can sometimes happen, uh, you can make it happen, for example, if you're driving along and you turn off the switch, and then re-turn it back on mm, again. Don't try this at home. I do it every time I drive my brother's car. <laughs> these, when, are, these are two different cars now, is that correct? Correct. But that's not anywhere near as exciting as the battery blowing up. I mean, the battery. Battery's real dangerous, of course. You're lucky that you were driving. Because you don't want to have sulfuric acid splash all over you. No. I didn't realize what had happened at first when the battery blew up. So I yeah. got back in the car, sat down, and 
apparently the first explosion must have cracked one or two additional cells in the battery, exposing more hydrogen, because when I turned the key, it Ooh. sounded like I set off a shotgun blast under the hood. I'm sure you did. At, at that point, I think I caught on that something wasn't quite right. <laughs> that was good thinking. <laughs> You're quick, Jim. <laughs> Thanks for your call. Okay. Good, good luck. luck. <laughs> <laughs> Wear protective gear whenever you drive. <laughs> All right, look, I think it's time for us to give the phone lines a rest for a minute and let our stations jump in with a, a few words, wouldn't you say? You mean words like, this station is in no way responsible for any of the content of the program you're listening to? <laughs> yeah, that's, basically that's it. <laughs> and then we'll be back with more calls and a brand new puzzler. And by the way, this is from my chicken and egg series. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, so please stay tuned. Pontiac Joe's in our town. He's the best guy around the Drinks like a fish, he smokes like a stove. I don't suppose he'll ever get old. Not Joe. Living fast, running hard. Yeah, Pontiac Joe lives in our town. He's the best guy around. Pontiac Joe's got a Bonneville. He was born the same year as Bill. Runs pretty good, don't look too bad. Only good car he ever had. And even though Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz clicks her heels four times whenever <laughs> she hears us say it, this is NPR. A Singaporean, a German, and a Nigerian are all in a room speaking English with each other, and it's going great. And then the American walks in, and that's where the misunderstandings start to occur. Understanding global English? That's on NPR's Rough Translation. If you're never quite sure how to answer the question, Where are you from? NPR's Rough Translation might be the podcast for you. Yes, finally, someone else. Give us your accents and your origin stories, your cross-cultural misfits yearning to just be, and listen to Rough Translation on NPR. Ha! Woo! <laughs> We're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers. And we're here to discuss cars, car repair, and, of course, the new puzzler from the Chicken Egg series. Yeah, yeah. What's that about? Well, can you name any other puzzler that was from the Chicken Egg series? Oh, this is the first of the series. Chicken Egg series. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. There may have been others, but I don't remember. Okay. Here it is. And you've seen these puzzles before, and everyone groans when they hear these. But not only am I going to next week reveal the answer... But how to think about this so you don't ever get stymied by this. Okay, yeah. It's very simple. A chicken and a half. (laughs) You ready? Pay attention (laughs) now. Yeah, yeah. A chicken and a half can lay an egg and a half in a day and a half. Yeah. Right? You get that? Got it. I got it. A chicken and a half can lay an egg and a half in a day and a half. How long will it take for two chickens to lay 32 eggs? Got it. So a chicken and a half can lay it. I want to see that half egg. <laughs> can lay an egg and a half. I want to see the half a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> in a day and a half, how long will it take two chickens yeah. to lay 32 eggs? Now, if you think you know the answer, write it on the back of a World of ZM-104 jukebox with oh. steel, oak, and precision-molded chrome tone construction. 100-disc, yeah. 200-watt professional Philips CD system, six hidden tri-directional speakers, and preloaded with the complete Sleepy La Beef deluxe box set. <laughs> <laughs> and send How are they going to get that up the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> and send it to Puzzler Tower, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge. Our fair city. Matt 022 Three, eight. Or you can email us your answer from <laughs> cartalk.com. But right now, if you have a question about your car, give us a call. The number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Andrew from Groton. Hi, Andrew. Groton, Mass? You bet. Cool. Where is that? It's in Never Never Land, halfway between Fitchburg and Lowell. My, my, my <laughs> recollection Two of... Two big towns I right went away. to a place once called the Groton Inn. And my recollection, I don't remember what I ate, but I remember being bitten by a dog. <laughs> That's all I remember. So you about never went that. back. <laughs> Didn't pay the check even. <laughs> How far away from Groton do you work, Andrew? Uh, I work in Groton in my home. Bless your heart. Good for you. Yeah. Okay, so what's up? Well, I have a 1995 Subaru Legacy station wagon. Mm-hmm. And this time of year, with uh, all the salt and sand on the roads, the rear windshield gets really dirty frequently. So I make a lot of use of the rear windshield washer. 
but it squirts up from the bottom of the windshield. Oh. And when it squirts up, it, it only reaches about halfway up the glass, and only the bottom half of the windshield gets cleaned. Yeah. Is there any way to like boost the pump and make it squirt more forcefully? So it well, is it a higher? matter of force? I mean, when when you squirt, does it hit the windshield too soon? And if it didn't, would it go up higher, or does it just not have enough oomph? That's to go a good up? question. I hadn't thought of the the trajectory issue. The trajectory is adjustable. Right. Ah. And you adjust it when, when you do it. I mean, just go take a look at it. This is not rocket science at all. You go good, take a look. I'm not a rocket scientist. <laughs> well, you know that. You wouldn't be working at home <laughs> unless you were Robert Goddard. <laughs> he was the only rocket scientist I knew who worked at home. <laughs> That's right. And he, you know where he was from? He was from Worcester. He was from Groton, Massachusetts. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> Funny you should bring him up. Well, anyway, yeah, you could, you may be able to adjust the aim. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Yeah, but I don't know if you can. I know the front nozzles on almost all cars are aimable. And, and aimable? <laughs> and, and that, too. You may not be able to read. Let's assume that you can't. Okay. Yeah, let's assume, if you can, here's what it is. You'll see the little nozzle. You stick a pin in it, mm -hmm. and it'll move back, forth, it, you know, it looks left, like It looks right. like an eyeball. Yeah. Okay. And if that's it, then you're done. But let's assume that it's not adjustable. I like it. Let's. That, that, I got it. Here's what you do. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna suggest <laughs> oh. rapidly moving backwards, <laughs> <laughs> slamming on the brakes. A... <laughs> no, but that isn't gonna work. No, well, here's what I would raise, do. That does raise the question, though, of. Does it matter if I'm moving or not? If I'm on a highway and yeah. there's airflow over the top, would yes. the airflow impede the movement of the water? Yeah, the I don't know. Airflow, as from my knowledge of airflow, <laughs> which is vast, or is it half vast? <laughs> I think it's half. Yeah, half. <laughs> from my knowledge of airflow, there would be a tendency if the Nozzle was pointed high on the back window. Mm -hmm. So aimed you were, high. Aimed high, and you were driving along at a good clip. The forces of air would tend to make it hit the window lower. Mm -hmm. Because so, you may well find that if you do it in your driveway, it hits higher. Should I wait or should I do it? <laughs> do you want to jump right in? Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, I don't. I don't know if that. If that. Oh, uh, there's no question about it. Here's why. No, see, you were all right. Just, <laughs> yeah. just throw out the theory. The explanation is what's going to sink you. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to use. Have you ever stood in the back of a truck? Of course. It was open. Of course. And my hair blows forward. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. The wind is blowing forward. It's blowing forward. So it's going to push the little stream of of water. Forward, too fast. So it's going to hit lower on the it's window. It's going to hit lower on the window. It, it may be. That's the same principle that makes the windshield get so dirty to begin with. I there can't believe we've dedicated five and a half minutes to this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, well, that's the never... reason the window gets so dirty is that debris flying up from your tires mm -hmm. in is fact, getting blown onto the gets window, pushed onto the glass. Right. Now, sure, man. Now that we understand that, here's what I recommend. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I can. That I love you it. pinch the hose. That leads to the nozzle. Ooh, why would you want to do that? Increase the pressure. Huh? <gasps> you'll get less flow, mm -hmm. but you'll get more pressure. And it'll shoot up higher. It'll shoot up higher. Right, it's like putting your thumb on the garden hose, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, sure. It's, it's trickling out, and you reduce the, the flow tremendously, and you get a spray that goes 20 feet. See, uh, so at you, least. So, you can sp so I can spray my wife while she's in the shiz lounge. <laughs> now, do you... <laughs> Do you sell a special hose clamp at um, Car Junk? No, uh, but we com? will now. <laughs> no, but you you can get those. In fact, at uh, uh, what do you call them? Pet supply stores for yeah, you know for, for the fish, fish tanks. For fish tanks. Oh, okay. By the way, I was I was I'm all set to do a whole rant on the state of modern windshield washers. Yeah. And I realize that many cars, in in an effort to one up the other guy, and I've noticed that on high end cars. You hit the windshield washer, and you have a deluge yeah. mm -hmm. on the windshield, the purpose of which is to clean the windshield as efficiently as possible, obviously. However, 
when you do that, you as the driver, you can't see a thing. Remember the old days when you got that feeble little stream yeah. and you had to do it 10 times to clean the windshield? At least you were able to still see out the window. While it was being cleaned. While it was being cleaned. But these modern ones, you press that button and it's like someone opens a fire hose. It's dangerous. It's <laughs> unnecessary. I, I tell you, someone sent us an email and said that the reason, the real reason and the real benefit of having that tremendous power is for guys who are tailgating you. Oh, you blast them. Oh, right. Right, especially when you have two little nozzles shooting up. You take one of those nozzles and you direct it over the top. <laughs> so when this guy pulls up behind you and starts flashing his lights and blowing his horn, you turn on your windshield washer and you soak the jerk. The soda jerk. The so soda jerk. Soak the jerk. Jeez. Oh. They're all Andrew, jerks. I feel better now. But Well, you know, as frivolous as this call may have seemed. Right, it opened up. I beg up. your pardon. <laughs> Well, it wasn't cream rinse. It wasn't cream rinse, that's for sure. I mean, it was a, uh, uh, admittedly, it was not the end of the world here. We were talking about a little nozzle. But I, it's been wonderful talking to you, Andrew. Well, right, and in explaining to you likewise. the remedies, we have probably violated every physics principle known to the, <laughs> to the science. But Well, I'm proud that we learned so much from ourselves. <laughs> I didn't know we knew anything about this subject. <laughs> Good luck, Andrew. Thanks. <laughs> See you later. Bye. 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 Uh, <laughs> it's, this, it's that amazing. was almost as good as the cattle car thing. No, better. One eight 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 Car Talk. That's eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Joyce from Ellicott City, Maryland. Hi, Joyce. Ellicott City. Yes. How do you spell it? E L I C O T T. Two L's. I thought so. What's wow. going on, Joyce? Well, uh, my question is really a driving slash relationship question. Oh, I'm yeah. married to this wonderful man. He's really calm and focused and such a gentle person. In fact, he even teaches meditation to other people. But when oh, he gets man. behind the wheel of a car, a he turns into, oh, well, not quite a jerk. He turns into sort of Mario Andretti meets Tony Soprano. <laughs> Wow, really? <laughs> yes. And wow. when you were describing to the last caller about riding the tail and blinking the lights, that's well, him. that's my husband. It is? And he teaches meditation. Meditation. Yes. You know, I, I've been struggling, as you may know, for many, many years to understand the people who do this. In what, fact, meditate? <laughs> The people who pull up behind someone else and start blowing the horn and flashing the lights. I mean, your husband sounds like a, the kind of guy who would never do the analogous thing if he were walking. That's right. That's absolutely right. I mean, if he right. were walking down the street and a little old lady was walking in front of him, would he whack her over the head and push her onto the curb? No, uh, but you the... know what? He wants to. Maybe he does. <laughs> he wants to. I can't believe that. I mean... I, I'm, I will try to be delicate here, but your husband is a jerk. <laughs> but but he's not a jerk. It's only when he's in the car. What is it about the car that turns people... If, if for no other reason, we should ban the use of cars, except, I mean... Well, think how much information it gives us about human nature. It's terrible. I, mean, I don't want to know that. Well, I'll tell you, I've, I've found out a lot about people over the... 29 years or so that we've been fixing cars at the shop. Yeah. You learn a lot about human nature when you give someone a $700 <laughs> repair. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't kill you. <laughs> no, you really, oh, when you disappoint Especially people. when it's to adjust the windshield washers <laughs> <laughs> with <laughs> the pin. <laughs> <laughs> Special tools required. <laughs> but when you tell someone, for example, that their car is, is not going to be ready, I mean, how that person reacts to that information, or, or when you call someone to say, look, we discovered there's another problem and it's going to be X number of dollars, you know, in addition to the 12000 we already told you. <laughs> uh, it's interesting to find out how people react to that information, and it tells you a lot about who they are. And? And I've determined that about half the people are jerks. My husband would be fine if you called him and told him that his car would be two days late, or he would be very calm about it's that. It's only the driving that causes him to go crazy. Yeah. Huh? Now, how about what if you drive instead of him? 
Well, um, he hates it when I drive or anyone else drives. Yeah. And he's very critical and, you know, tells me what to do and move over here and <laughs> they're not going fast enough and get in this lane. Uh-huh. Do you think it's a gender thing, a guy thing? Well, I mean, it, there's more of it in guys, but everything has gotten so much worse in the past decade or two because the women have joined the forces of the evil dark well, not, side. Not all the women, but enough of them are, are, are uh, uh, shifting sides. Enough of them that it's no longer 50% who are crazy drivers. It's 50% plus half the women. Well, 75%. I'll tell you, I, I have left uh, the uh, the dark side. You have? Yeah. You no longer tailgate? No. You no longer blow the horn? Never. And why did you do that? I left the dark side because I realized there's no place... I wanted to go in that, that much of a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that I have given up. You wearing sweatpants? <laughs> I'm going to wear sweatpants every day because <sighs> I think it's hopeless. Well, Joyce, we if, got if, guys like Joyce's husband, whose name is Frank. Frank? Yeah, Ralph. good. Frank's good. Frank's good. Let's call him Frank, yeah. <laughs> well, have, you, have you confronted him with this? Oh, absolutely. And I have friends who won't drive with him. Because it's so scary. Everybody's told him. Man, I don't know what to do about it, Joyce. This I, I don't. Horrible. I don't either. But you. But he has to resolve this because this is incongruous with who he is. Absolutely. Or as my brother says, it's who he really is. Ooh. Yeah. Well, and that would be pretty sad. You know, there's a famous Latin expression that says "in vino veritas." Yeah. And you might have to get him plastered some night to find <laughs> out who he <laughs> really is. I suspect even though you may not think so, uh, that Frank has way too much stress in his life. Ah, probably true. And he's got to yeah. get rid of it somewhere. This, So that's the vent. Yeah. You're probably right. Uh, yeah, he needs, to, he needs to do something else. He I think to... it's scream therapy we're going to recommend for Oh, Frank. that sounds like a good idea. Scream therapy. Maybe. Okay, well, we'll try that and see if it helps. Now, keep us posted, Joyce, because... And if he... anyone has any theories about this, really, I would love you to tell me what they are, especially someone who knows something about people. It... Or if anyone can explain to us the unusual physics behind uh, <laughs> real windshield <laughs> washers, <laughs> we'd like to be informed We'd like to hear about, about that, that too. So, uh, Joyce, we love you. Thanks for uh, calling, and good luck. Thanks good luck. Lot. Good luck. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye. Well, it's happened again. You've wasted another perfectly good hour listening to Car Talk. Our esteemed producer is Doug the Subway Fugitive, not a slave to fashion, Bongo Boy Berman. Our associate producers are David the Calves of Belleville Green and Catherine Frau Blucher Fenelosa. <laughs> our web lackey is Doug the Old Grey Mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our engineer is John Cartman Parati. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman. Our technical, spiritual, and menu advisor, just back from the Bastille Smoked Seal Braised Veal and Candied Eel Happy Meal, <laughs> is John Bugsy Lawler. <laughs> our public opinion pollster is Paul Murky of Murky Research, assisted by statistician Marjorie Vera. Our customer message comes from NPR sponsor Odoo. Odoo is a suite of user-friendly business applications designed to automate, streamline, and simplify 